on, on that topic, you know, the the sort of a changing of the guard, um, essentially, you know, the the older players sort of topping out and and the, the younger ones coming through. Um, clearly, you know, there there is obviously a, a Brazilian contingent coming through uh, as well. You know, you, you have Dodo, uh, Vital, Marcos Antonio, mm-hmm. Tete, Maicon, Marquinhos, Cipriano, and Fernando. They're all twenty three and under. Um, you know, there's. The, 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 there's a there's a bedrock of, of of young talent there at Shakhtar. Um, the two that I really want to focus on are, are sort of two um, scouted sweethearts, really, um, because we've we've seen that we've we've sort of tracked their progress for quite a while. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they signed for the club at the same time, or, or around the same time at the very least, um, and that's Marcus Antonio and Tete. Um, you know, they, they are very exciting players. Um, Marcus Antonio being sort of a, a, a six transitioning to an eight, a very, very good punchy passer from midfield, you know, being able to thread those balls through to the to the attack, uh, the attackers, uh, you know, a, a, a a, a box-to-box presence, really. Um, and Tete being a, a, a really incisive wide forward um, who, who this season in, in, in the Champions League, you know, c- kind of took apart Real Madrid in, in that game um, uh, in, in Spain. So, you know, the, the, there's definitely talent there and there's definitely talent to, to replace the, the players who are p- perhaps coming to the end of their, their tenure. Um, but with Marcus Antonio and Tete, you know, in terms of the Ukrainian league, for anybody who perhaps doesn't watch it as often, you know, where would you rank them amongst sort of the best players um, in the division for their respective positions? They both featured quite heavily in the early early half of the season before the winter break. They've been a bit more bit part since we've returned, I guess, inside February, March. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that's the case. Um, Castro's the manager's been struggling a bit with um, results since the turn of the year. But in general, I guess both of them are up there in terms of uh, conversions of, you know, the stats that that they're good at in terms of, you know, passing, carrying the ball, um, Marcus Antonio, um, in terms of, you know, he's he reminds me of Fred back in the day when before his, you know, before he moved to United, he was a, he was a box-to-box midfielder, um, able to string a pass through to the attackers, but then also can sweep up if needed um, and help support the central defensive midfielders such as um, Alan Patrick or Stepanenko. However, I still think that he probably needs a bit of physicality to his game. At age 20, I think he's still slightly a bit too small um, to be that fully rounded central midfielder that a lot of people think that he might be able to become. So in that in that sense, there are still a lot more established players that you probably would put uh, ahead of him just on the basis that he's probably not played as much and he hasn't got that um, experience just yet. But it looks like he's on the way there. And I mean, the same for Tete. He's played even less, I think, than um, Marcus Antonio in terms of like starts. Um, however, whenever he does play, he always somehow is able to find a, a goal for himself, um, has some sort of um, key contribution and very impressive from what we've seen. I just don't really understand what is required more from him for Castro to play him over the likes of the ageing Marlos and Tyson who look like they're slightly a bit losing their breath when playing uh, mm. full 90 minutes, etc. Yeah, I mean, they are the two players that, that we've we've sort of really focused on um, sort of when we've whenever we've watched Shakhtar. And, and you know, there's... There have been other players who, who've, who've obviously stood out, but perhaps not to the same extent. And I think the one that, you know, the takeaway that, that we've always had, that I've always had with, with those two is that, you know, if they were if they were playing sort of, um, you know, 3000 minutes a season, then, then you know, we'd be we'd be talking about some of the sort of the, the hottest property in, in, in Eastern Europe, really. Um, and to be honest, they probably already are. They probably still are, regardless of that, um, because of, you know the intrigue around you know having it being a, a Brazilian in Ukraine and 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 that sort of thing. But um, I think with with Marcus Antonio and Tete, I think their their ceilings are are perhaps higher than than the Ukrainian Premier League. Yeah, no, I, I'd say so for sure. I just guess what's required for them to get to reach the heights of some of their compatriots in the past. You know, William. Um, Fernandinho, Fred, etc., to move to those bigger sides, I still need to establish themselves in the starting eleven at Shakhtar, because mm. I mean I know Tete's been linked with a couple of bigger clubs like Bayern and elsewhere, but I mean, whilst they've shown 
definitely that they can play in the you know the Champions League and have had good performances and I guess that's sort of the litmus test. Um, they're still not for whatever reason um, out and out right first choices on yeah you know on the paper uh, of the team sheet. So I guess that might come next season. Yeah, and it's all about a de- you know having that that pathway to begin with, and and obviously you know this gradual easing into the team, and and you know they, they are playing more minutes than they were playing when they first arrived. You know they they signed I think it was uh, back in two thousand and nineteen, so you know they they they've had a gradual process of bedding in um, at, at Shakhtar. So you know you, you'd imagine that when sort of the the Marlosses and, and Junior Morais um, types are, are, are less influential, um, even, even more so next season that you know. That will be the, the the litmus test, as you say, for for the Tetes um, and Marcus Antonio's. Where the, you have to ask the question, you know, this is your chance to step up and and really show that you deserve to be in this starting eleven on merit. Um, but I've got high hopes, certainly.